that's where they kept all the, the beer stockpiled at, you know, the, the cases of beer. Well, I was supposed to be back there, like I said, I was like six, five, six years old. I was supposed to be back there, you know, taking a nap. And my grandmother come back there and I had like two cases of past blue ribbon I'd opened up and I took like one or two sips out of every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was hammered. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember her saying, like, I can't tell, I can't tell you, Granny, but he'll kill you if he buys out. Yes, Spencer. Yes, sir. What beer do you like? Right there. Mountain Fresh Spring Water. Cool Mountain Fresh, light. Mountain Fresh Cool's Light. Yeah, I do like a buckskin every now and then, though. Yeah? Yeah. I like that Coors Banquet pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. Just packs a few more calories, so I lay off of them. All right, Jeff Gibbons. Michelob Amber Bock. Michelob Amber Bock. Good amber beer. All right, all right. And finally, I kind of with Jeff Gibbons. I'm uh, I like Michelob products. Michelob Lights, kind of my all-time favorite, but mm -hmm. I'm fond of Miller Light as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic Pilsner. All right. Well, I like the Michelob Ultra myself. So yeah, we're in agreement with that. In college, on a budget. We would take the, it'll get you drunk fast approach, and we drank a lot of Steel Reserve. Steel Reserve. It's not a product that's gonna leave you feeling good the next day, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it will get you from A to Z <clears throat> really quickly yeah. and very inexpensively. <laughs> so that is your advice to the college students of today. Yeah, if you're trying to save some money, you know, stick with your, uh, <laughs> stick with your butt ice and your bush. Yeah. If you go a little more expensive, you go Steel Reserve, it'll get you there. I take natural light. That's my, preferred mm -hmm. cheap beer if i if for whatever reason i walk into a market and they're like sir i'm sorry we only sell the cheapest beer i hope they have natural light yeah but that's not cheap anymore <clears throat> no it's not anymore that, that that's, got that's a premium brand now it's it? got a hip the, to drink the hipsters <laughs> drove up the yeah. price of the the uh you walk his best cheap beer mm -hmm. yeah Paps, little Paps Blue Paps Ribbon. Paps Blue Ribbon, it's not yeah. cheap anymore. <laughs> Paps yeah. Blue Ribbon was the world's greatest beer in like 1908 or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Right. And every beer joint across America, there's those little, those old glass signs, yeah. you know. I think they were like World Fair, 1908 well, like, yeah, or something. Yeah, like in the 80s, they just got world's best beer. They just went away. I remember. They made one of the t-shirts and beer. Yeah. Donnie Baker, he's a big, he's a big uh, PBR guy. He is. Yeah. Our grandmother, Ferris Neely, ran the Rendezvous Club starting in the year 1973. And then in the early 90s, um, like college age, I would bartender there on the weekends. And uh, there was, a, well, she had a this good old, <clears throat> cast of characters who would come in there. I don't know if places like this exist anymore, where there's just like this mm -hmm. group of cool old dudes that just hang out and, you know, these days you can't really just sit around a bar and drink beer and, you know. So, there was this guy, um, Curtis Thornton, who drank the Pabst Blue Ribbon. And I guess my, my, I guess my granny gave it to him because all the beer was the same price, but I guess she gave him a discount on the Pat Blue Ribbon because every time he got a beer, they would do like this secret handshake where he would, <laughs> he would pass her a dollar and then she would give, give him the beer. Yeah. Because I guess, I guess all the other beer was more expensive. Mm -hmm. And so for many years, our grandmother sold Curtis yeah. Thornton his Pat Blue Ribbon at the special dollar discounted price you know it's something that our listeners and, and our viewers don't don't know but of course you know chris and i are related you know because we're brother-in-laws but your grandmother had a beer joint my grandmother and grandfather had a beer joint and you know, they had a spotlight over hickman county they shut it down opened up the blue moon and it was right along the same time miss ferris you know had hers going when yeah. they opened up the blue moon so yeah. i mean it was i grew up in a beer joint just like y'all did <laughs> I yeah. spent some time in the Blue Moon as well. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. When Granny had it for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I won't ever forget, well, see, my, my grandparents actually lived. There's a beer joint in the front, and then there's living quarters in the back. That's where they lived. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I was you walk through the front door, hang a left, takes yeah. you to the living quarters. Yeah. The bar was on the right. The bar was on the right. Yeah. <laughs> and the kitchen was straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, and back then, you know, the jukebox sat over in the left hand corner, like right through we went in the living quarters. And the only thing they had separating the living quarters from the beer joint was a curtain. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I stayed with them quite a bit. And I remember one time, Back in the in the master bedroom there, that's where they kept all the the beer stockpiled at. You know the, the cases of the beer. Well, I was supposed to be back there. Like I said I was like six, five, six years old. I was supposed to be back there, you know, taking a nap. And my grandmother come back there, and I had like two cases of past blue ribbon. I'd opened up, and I took like one or two sips out of every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was hammered. <laughs> And I remember her saying, like, I can't tell, I can't tell you, Granny, but he'll kill you if he dies out. Because I went through almost all their inventory, you know, they had stopped by there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was uh, old Judy Plunkett. Y'all remember Judy Plunkett? Yes. Don't you? Yes, I love yeah. Judy. Judy yeah. Plunkett. Judy come yeah. in and stand on his head on a bar stool and spin in circles. Really? Yeah. I remember Judy Plunkett had this weird little notch yeah. on the back of his neck yeah. and he would show it yeah. to you yeah. and he would always tell you that he got run over my train yeah. and I believed him when I was yeah. kid. I didn't. <laughs> he was a character yeah. he looked he was, kind of like Curly from the three Stooges. Yeah, he, he did always had his hat on yeah. and always like the same like work uniform yeah. you know like just that like, like tan looking shirt yeah. 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 and uh, then of course so, uh, uh, Larry Dawson hair bear. Hey, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. friends with our Uncle Randall. What was he? Yeah. yeah. I remember Uncle Randall talking about yeah. Hair Bear, yeah. But yeah, some of the same same customers, you know, when, I guess y'all remember Bill Hampton too, don't you? I don't remember. He used to, mm -hmm. all of them used to you know, frequent both places, you know, but mm -hmm. it was, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, the thing was, you know, they had shuffleboards back then. And, yeah. Love shuffleboards. Yeah. And I tell my granddad, you know, uh, Mac, I wanted to play shuffleboard. It didn't matter who was in line or who was playing. He'd go over and run them off, and I get to play shuffleboard. Yeah, you know, oh. no waiting. I got to go play it. Well, that's kind of like similarly. I don't know, I guess in the early '80s, you know, open up the video game. Play, yeah, our Uncle Tom at the rendezvous would open up the door to the video game machine. And you push that so button, click that little thing, and mm -hmm. play free, un yeah. unlimited yeah. video game. <laughs> I got hooked on that shit. I would spend hours. Well, then I bought me a book. I remember that. It showed the pattern. Showed all the patterns. Yeah. I became a Pac-Man master. <laughs> <laughs> Playing for free at the Rendezvous Club. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, oh G. Puckett. I, I want to tell you, he gave me a quarter one time. When I was a kid. And it had a hole cut it. Well, back then, you know, it was like 10 cents or whatever, you know, for... Uh, you know, play a song. Well, you get five songs for a quarter. He tied a string around a corner. And he showed me. I go over and I drop that quarter in a jukebox and pull it right back out, and I have five songs. Yeah. That's like Al Bundy. Did you ever see that episode? No. Where he took uh, Bud to the strip club. He said, I'm going to show you a trick <coughs> my daddy taught me. And he, he did the same thing. He had it with a dollar bill. He had a string on it. <laughs> he, he'd stuff it in there and the girls would walk by. He'd put it back in there. Yank that back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be hard to wait for any of that today. Yeah. 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 I think so. All right. This has been the debut episode of the Prophet Dig Beer Club. Yes, sir. Final thoughts? Drink a lot of beer.